Hello, I'm Tom Gillis. I'm a business analyst and I work from Duhallow in North Cork in the Republic of Ireland. This presentation is a byproduct of some work I did using Microsoft SQL Server. The project I was working on used SQL Server. I wanted to use server authentication rather than Windows authentication because I want to allow non-Windows clients and I was particularly interested to investigate security without working outside SQL Server itself. Working with security can be frustrating especially if things don't work as you expect. During the course of this work I solved some problems and I thought it would be useful to share what I'd learned because it consolidates the learning process for me and produces things that can be useful in the future. Now my objective is to allow a user access to a database and in this context it's useful to consider SQL Server and the database as being two separate entities. There are a number of stages in this process which I've numbered here 1 to 5. The first stage is to ensure that SQL Server is set up properly. The next is to define the login. Then the user, the connect privilege and finally the privileges on the database itself. Step 1 is defining the correct properties for the SQL Server instance. The next stage is defining a login, then defining the user ensuring that the user has the connect privilege to the database and finally granting the other privileges that you want to the user. During this presentation I'll show you how to perform these tasks and what you will see if something is wrong. The method I'm going to use is to work through the process of defining a user. I'm using SQL Server Management Studio uh, I prefer to use SQL scripts, but I will point out how to use the Management Studio dialogues. My starting point is that I have an existing database called ThuDB, which contains two tables. I'm connected to the SQL server uh, as a systems administrator, and what I want to do is I want to allow a new user to use the tables in ThuDB. Uh, and I assume that you understand the principles of SQL and the idea of a user having different privileges to do th different things on the database. First of all, the SQL Server properties. Um, to look at these, you open the uh, SQL Server properties page and select the security page. Now you must have SQL Server and Windows Authentication Mode selected. If you need to make a change here then you will also have to restart SQL Server for the change to take effect. To view or change the properties right click on the top level and select the properties option. That will display a uh, dialog box. When that appears, select the security page and on there you will see 
under authentication you've got two options and we want SQL so we're going to cancel that because there's no change request. If I had made a change then I would need to restart SQL Server. If you if the user attempts to log in with a login that does not exist of an incorrect password or SQL Server is in Windows authentication mode you will get exactly the same error and you can't tell from outside what the problem really is. Um, you can access the, uh, the documentation by clicking on the blue question mark but that really is about it. The login I'm going to create is Friday update user and I do this by selecting the security uh, folder in the object explorer. I can see that the you, the login I want to create doesn't exist under the list but you will notice that there are other logins there uh, including uh, one for me and several that are used by SQL Server itself. I've created the login by running a simple script. Um, on the screen you can see two scripts. The first creates the login and the second creates the corresponding user. Uh, I'm going to do this as two separate steps and show you what happens in the middle. Um, obviously defining a password that's the same as a user ID is not good practice. Now that I've created the login I can log in and indeed when I do so and you'll see this in a moment you'll see that the login appears in Object Explorer and I can create a new session and I can see the databases that exist. To add a new login using a dialog expand security and logins here you can see Friday update user exists already right click on logins select add new user in the dialog enter the login name select server authentication and enter the passwords in the usual way but if I try to do anything with either of these databases then I will get a databases not access accessible warning um, because the user has not been defined. To connect to the database with the new uh, login we've created, right click at the top level, hit connect, select SQL authentication, enter the login and password and click connect. The new connection will appear and you will see it starts. Expand databases. You can see the two databases defined but if you try and expand either of them you'll be rejected. Nothing more to do now except disconnect from the server. This picture shows graphically where we're encountering the problem. Now I can check the situation that I have by running some simple queries uh, against the system tables. Here we can see a I've run a query which checks the privileges that 
the Friday update user has and you can see that it has connect SQL privilege. If I now query the uh, database permissions table again this time looking for connect privilege you can see that there is no Friday update user. Another simple check that I can do is to look at the logins in Object Explorer and here you can see Friday update user. Okay to create the user I run this simple script um, and you'll notice that I use a use foodb statement to make sure that I'm creating the user in the correct database. To create a new user go to the foodb database go down to security expand roles right click on users select new user here you can enter the login username and the corresponding login name rerunning the query uh, against the uh, database permissions I can now see the Friday update user and see that it has the connect privilege so now we can log in we have a user and the user has been granted the connect privilege um, coincidentally by creating the user finally I grant the privileges that I actually want Friday update user to have in this case I'm granting select on two tables if I now create a new SQL statement window and enter uh, a select statement you can barely see but it'll be clearer when I do the demonstration that the IntelliSense uh, is aware that the tables are there they are visible in Object Explorer as well and when I run the query I can get through to the uh, tables and I can display the results. To test the new user ID connect as before logging in as Friday update user expand databases under the connection expand tables now you can see the two tables if we attempt to enter a select statement and use DBO as a qualifier you can see that IntelliSense recognizes the table names if I now execute this query you can see that I have connected to the so we've achieved our objective the user has got logged in and has connected to the database and is able to run select statements against the tables that they've been given permission to use. So to recap, to allow a user to access SQL Server using SQL Server authentication, first of all we have to set up SQL Server appropriately. Then we have to define the login, then define a user in the database that corresponds to the login and that action also gives the user the connect privilege. Finally we grant the user the privileges that they need against the tables in the database itself. Next steps why don't you try doing this yourself? All that you need is SQL Server Express and you need to be able to connect as 
a system administrator. The setup is creating a database containing at least one table. After that, you just follow the steps as I've described. Thank you for your interest and why don't you take a look at my blog sometime. I try to cover items that I find interesting and I hope you will too.